Hey, what up, people? I hope y'all are doing absolutely fantastic on this beautiful day. In this video, we're gonna be going over some iOS 14.3 tips and tricks, as well as some changes and fixes that came along with that update. So to kick it off, let's talk about one of the most hyped up features that came with iOS 14.3, which is Apple Fitness Plus. Now, I'm a huge fan of it. Think of it like Peloton meets Beachbody Fitness. So if you have equipment like a treadmill or a bike, you can take classes. If you don't have any of that stuff, they do have some like plyometric, uh, cardio type stuff, yoga, all of that. To access it, you're gonna go into the fitness app. And then right here on the bottom, it says Fitness Plus. Just tap on that. And that's gonna pull up Apple Fitness Plus. Now, Apple Fitness Plus is a subscription-based service. I pay 30 bucks a month for everything. So I get like the two terabytes of iCloud storage. I get Apple Fitness Plus, Apple Music, all that stuff. And honestly, when you look at it compared to things like Peloton and even Beachbody, like it's really affordable. And I gotta say, it's a really good deal. It doesn't have a lot to choose from right now, but you can see the potential behind it. So inside the Fitness Plus section of the Fitness app, we have categories at the top. We have HIT, Yoga, Core, Strength, Treadmill, Cycling, Rowing, Dance, and Mindful Cooldown. We have a section for new exercises this week or new classes. We have uh, stuff for beginners, uh, the most popular workouts at that time. You can browse by trainer. Uh, simple and quick workouts, which is something I want to quickly touch on. The cool thing about Apple Fitness Plus is you can work out in sessions ranging from like five or 10 minutes all the way up to like 50 or 60 minutes. So if you have a jam packed day and you can only squeeze in like a 15 minute workout, you could do so. I'm really digging Apple Fitness Plus. I've done a few workouts already and I got to say like the workouts they do are effective and the music they play is spot on. That's another added benefit to Fitness Plus versus something like Beachbody is you get an excellent selection of music and you can browse that music just by tapping on a workout and then scrolling down and it will show you what music is going to be played during that session. Of course, this works with all of your Apple devices, including your Apple Watch, your iPad, or your Apple TV. So it's really easy to stream a workout straight to your television and all of your stats are going to be displayed on your TV. This includes things like the calories burned, your heart rate, all of that good stuff is right there so you don't have to constantly look at your watch. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but me personally, I like the direction that Apple is headed when it comes to fitness. They've always killed it when it came to the Apple Watch and seeing them really invest in fitness as a whole, including this new fitness subscription service, it's pretty cool. Now, number two is AirPods Max support. Now, I don't have the AirPods Max. Um, me personally, I just, I'm not gonna spend $550 on luxury headphones. If I'm gonna spend 550 bucks, I want a nice pair of reference monitors and I wanna be doing music, so I want that tool to fit my job. If you do happen to have the AirPods Max, you do have support now on all of the iPhones that are running on iOS 14.3. So make sure you update and you'll get the most out of your AirPods Max. The third thing I wanna show you is Apple Pro Raw. So we're gonna go into the settings, scroll all the way down until we get to camera, tap on camera, go under formats, and make sure Apple Pro Raw is turned on. You're gonna to wanna to turn this on even if you don't plan on using it right then and there, and I'll show you why. So once this is turned on and we go into the camera app, you can see we have the option to enable RAW right here. So you don't have to have it on even though Pro RAW is turned on in the settings. So you can have it disabled. Now you're gonna save storage by taking HEIF photos or JPEG photos. But whenever you wanna snap a photo with RAW, just turn it on and that's it. Now you can see the RAW option right here. If I go back into the settings, like I said, turn that off and then go back into the camera app, you can see I no longer have the option to enable RAW. So this is why I said turn it on even if you don't plan on using it right then and there. Another cool thing that Apple has enabled with iOS 14.3 is for all the folks that use PAL instead of NTSC, depending on your region and location. If you're unfamiliar with either of these terms, it's basically a color encoding system that will affect the refresh rates of your TV or monitor or display that you're viewing the content on. So it's all gonna come down to the frame rate that the person filming that video shot in. So if I film a video in 24 frames per second and play it back on a 50 hertz display in a PAL region, it might be a little bit stuttery. Uh, so you can go in now on your iPhone and change it to 25 frames per second, which is gonna give you smoother playback. In order to enable these PAL formats, you're gonna go into your settings, scroll all the way down to camera, tap on where it says record video, 
and then make sure Show PAL Formats is enabled. Now you can record in 4K at 25 frames per second or 1080p at 25 frames per second. I would have loved to have seen 50 frames per second instead of just the 60, so maybe that will come with a future update, but for now, we have 25 and 1080p and 4K, which is great for the people that needed it. Another quick tip for you is if you do live in one of these PAL regions and you notice a lot of flickering coming from the lights when you're recording video, try to enable the 25 frames per second or PAL format and see if that gets rid of the flicker. A lot of the times it's going to help out, but of course it's gonna come down to your region. Now the next thing I wanna show you has to do with Siri now being able to play back sounds. This is pretty cool. So Siri can actually play back various sounds now, which is going to keep your young children entertained. So check it out. Hey Siri, what sound does a cow make? A cow sounds like this. Hey Siri, what sound does a whale make? Here's a humpback whale. Hey Siri, what sound does a motorcycle make? A motorcycle sounds like this. So those are always fun and I can see that keeping children entertained for at least five minutes, maybe 10, depending on your kid. Number six has to do with Siri shortcuts. And basically they have simplified the process of launching apps straight from your home screen for all the people that were into customizing their home screen, changing up the way their icons look and stuff like that. So if I go over to one that I made right here just for this video, it's called Messages. Obviously when I tap on it, it's going to pull up Messages. However, in the past, prior to iOS 14.3, it would take you to the Shortcuts app where you had to launch Messages. Now if I tap on it, it automatically pulls up Messages and then it gives me a notification that the shortcut was ran. So it's a little bit faster, a little bit more simple, and in my opinion, it's cleaner versus having to go to the Shortcuts app. If you don't know how to create a custom series shortcut to launch an app or change up the way the icon looks, let me know and I can include it in a future series shortcut video um, that I'll get to probably in January, but let me know. The next thing I wanna show you is how to change your default search engine from whatever it is you're using to Ecosia because that is something new in iOS 14.3. If you're like me and you don't know what the hell Ecosia is, I had to look it up because I've never heard of it. It's an alternative to Google or Bing that uses all of the ad revenue from your searches to fund planting trees in areas that need trees. I think the environmental aspect of this entire search engine is awesome and I might start using it just to try to give back. I just need to look into it a little bit more to make sure that's where the money is going. Because in this day and age, you really never know. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your settings. You're gonna go under Safari. And then right here where it says search engine, you're gonna tap on search engine and you're gonna change it to Ecosia. And that's it. So if you're like me and you happen to use a different browser instead of Safari, like for instance, I use Chrome as my default browser, you can go into your settings and change your search engine from whatever it is by default to Ecosia. To do that, I'm gonna go into Chrome, tap on these three little dots, go into my settings, and right here where it says search engine, tap on that, and then I can change it to Ecosia. Number eight is all about the TV app. It's been updated, it looks better, it has categories, it gives you better search functionality, and it should be easier to find the content that you wanna watch. Once inside the Apple TV app, you'll notice a tab on the bottom that says Apple TV Plus Originals. If you tap on that, it's gonna give you all of Apple's original content, which is so much cleaner than what it was before. To go one step further, if you go under the search tab, you can now search for content based upon these different genres, which is always nice to see because finding something to watch can sometimes just take forever. Another cool thing is if you're trying to do a specific search, as you start typing out the search, it will give you suggestions and top results, which is really cool because it simplifies the search process as well as gives you suggestions to titles that you might not have been thinking about at that time. Next up is a feature for the Apple Watch. So it's more for Apple Watch OS. However, because iOS 14.3 is needed for this feature, I'm gonna go ahead and mention it. 
So the Apple Watch now has something called Cardio Fitness. Cardio Fitness measures VO2 max, which is the maximum amount of oxygen that your body is able to consume during exercise. Measurements are done over time, but the iPhone and your Apple Watch being able to send notifications to let you know about VO2 max fluctuations. VO2 max is a metric that can help you chart your overall fitness level and fitness gains. Cardio Fitness can be accessed through a new trend that's been added to the Activity app, and it can be set up in the Health app on the iPhone. Cardio Fitness levels are available for users age 20 and above and are estimated by age. Another cool thing that comes with iOS 14.3 is app clip codes. Say that 10 times fast. That is a Dr. Seuss riddle. This is like my seventh take trying to say that combination of words. So I've talked about app clips before in the past. Basically, it's a way for developers to unlock a specific part of an app that can be utilized without having to download that app. So think about doing a search in Apple Maps for Panera. When you tap on that search, you can pull up Panera's menu without having to download the Panera app. And you can even place an order, which is pretty cool. So with app clip, this is the moment that he realizes he needs hooked on phonics. So with app clip codes, developers can take advantage of QR codes or NFC in order to launch specific portions of their apps, which should open up use cases. Like I can't wait to see how Disney takes advantage of this using their apps. Next up is pregnancy tracking. So if we go into the health app and then go under browse and do a quick search for pregnancy, See, it pops up right here. Tap on that and you can start logging pregnancy information. However, I don't think I'm pregnant, at least that I know of. But anyways, if you are pregnant and you want to log that information in, you can do so. And then you can add it to your favorites in order to access it on the fly at any given time. There's actually quite a bit of stuff in the health app that I've not seen before. Like I can log my sexual activity every day, nonstop five times a day, seven days a week, 366 days a year, I'm active. The next thing I wanna show you is inside the weather app. So if we pull it up and then swipe down, we now have air quality recommendations to a specific amount. So you can see in my area, it's 33 and good. And depending on your location, you can get this same statistic or same specific measurement. I believe it's available in the US, the UK, Mexico, India, and Germany. So those are the five locations that this new specific air quality measurement is available in when it comes to the stock weather app on your iPhone. So one bug that's been really annoying ever since I got my iPhone 12 Pro Max is this text messaging bug that just doesn't give me my notifications. Like I've been getting a lot of texts lately where I just don't get a notification and I don't even have like the little number icon on the messages app. It's led to like friendships being ruined, divorces. In any case, iOS 14.3 has seemingly fixed this bug, at least in my experience. I haven't had any more missed notifications when it comes to my text messages. So that in itself is a reason to update to the latest firmware. Speaking of fixes, the bug that was causing MagSafe Duo chargers just not to work on iPhone 12 models has been fixed, and now your MagSafe Duo charger should be fully compatible with your iPhone 12. Personally, I never experienced any issues, but if you did, there you go. In the past, you could use Siri shortcuts to automatically change your wallpaper by putting a Siri shortcut on your homepage. And all you have to do is just tap that Siri shortcut and it will cycle through a series of wallpapers in an album that you designate. So if I want to set up a dynamic wallpaper, which is new with iOS 14.3, I can do that. So right here, I have my auto wall series shortcut. So if I just tap on it, it's going to pull a wallpaper from my photos album, which you can assign when you're creating this shortcut. And that's how you had to do it in the past. You had to tap on that series shortcut to run it. However, now if I go under automation and then tap on create personal automation, you can set up a dynamic wallpaper based upon the time of day or maybe a location. So for this example, I'm going to do time of day. So I'm gonna select time of day. I'm gonna do sunrise. I'm gonna do at sunrise, tap done, tap daily. Next, I'm going to do a search for shortcuts. We're gonna do run shortcut. And then we're gonna tap on where it says shortcuts and we're gonna select auto wall, hit next. Hit done, and there you go. So now it's set up to change my wallpaper every single morning to a different wallpaper based on the album that I selected in the original auto wall series shortcut. If you're interested in this shortcut, I'll link it down below as well as the source where I got it from. 
Next up, we have a few changes inside the Apple News app. Inside the Apple News app, under audio, you now have the option to not just listen to a story, you can also read it by tapping on read story. So if you just want to take some time out of your day to read the story instead of listening to it, you can do that. But more importantly, if we scroll all the way down and then tap on audio stories, you can now browse stories based upon categories right up here at the top. So we have news and politics, science and tech, arts and culture, sports, travel, lifestyle, business and economy, and a few others. So it makes it easier to find the news that you wanna to listen to right then and there. Last but not least, we have a few changes inside the Home app. So inside the Home app, if I go into the Home settings, I can update any device that is connected to my Home app that is an Apple product right here inside the app. It's super easy, just tap on it, and I can perform all of them right here. Another cool thing inside the home app is intercom, which works similar to Amazon's drop-in feature, which basically turns a speaker into an intercom so you can communicate with someone in a different room. This is great for people that have multi-story houses or just a big house in general. You can actually access the intercom feature right from the main page in the home app by tapping on the icon in the top right. You can see I don't have it set up because I'm currently on the Amazon smart home platform, but in any case, if you wanna use it, that's how. Another cool thing is adaptive lighting, which will change the colors of your lights throughout the day, so you can make them warmer, cooler, so they can be super cool in the morning, and then as the day progresses, they can get warmer, and you can set all that up inside the Home app, which is new with iOS 14.3. So there you go. That was a bunch of new features with iOS 14.3, some exciting ones, some fixes, some maybe not so exciting ones, but in any case, it is a feature-packed update, and so far, I haven't noticed any issues. Make sure to update to 14.3 if you haven't done so. I would say it's pretty safe. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.